You're a little farther away than I can see, but welcome to you. Thank you for coming to visit with us tonight. Lauren, would you mind to go down and give them a bulletin? Thank you, dear. I'm going to speak tonight on a subject called the open door. Now, already Peter mentioned the open door, and Spencer talked about a door opening. And we look at Mike, and this week there was a door opened at the news that he could do a larger column. And God is good, and he does have open doors for us. Have you ever used a key in a door and it just would not unlock? Yep. Yeah. Perhaps the door shifts with the cold and it sticks, and so you lean your shoulder into it and you shove and you remain on the outside. You cannot get in. How frustrating is that? This sometimes happens with our lives. We stand on the outside a long time before we realize that we need to get on the inside to change what's happening in our lives. We can't always stay on the outside. Let's pray. Lord, let us look on the inside of our hearts where we need to bring change to be new. As we grow in you, Lord, we are brought to change in us. This work takes place in us, within us, and it truly is brought about by the Holy Spirit. We need to let go of holding on and release ourselves to the newness that you have for us. Change my heart, O oh God, and make it ever new. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. You are the potter, and I am the clay. Mold me and shape me. This is what I pray. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Amen. My message tonight is not going to be long because I really feel that God has something that's going to transpire. So I'm leaving this open to the Holy Spirit. I'm leaving an open door. If you have your Bibles, I'm, I'm going to work from Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. So that's Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. And while you're looking that up, I'm going to read it. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is, his work, that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ. That's from the New International Version. Now some of you will have that and it will read a little differently. But you're going to understand it as we go through. Thank you, Father God, for your word and for the instruction found within your word. Lord, if we study your word daily, how blessed we are to have a brand new understanding of where you want us to be. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes we don't receive from God because we don't ask. Or we wait to receive. We do not wait to receive, pardon me. Or we do not believe that he will give us what we ask for. Or we do not come open. Just like standing outside the door, not being able to get in because the key doesn't work or the door is stuck. Sometimes we lock ourselves away from the Lord. We shut him out because of anger, past hurts, unforgiveness, mistakes in our lives, or whatever reason. And really, God is just waiting on you. He is in control. We learn that from Jeremiah chapter 29, 11. He is strong. That's found in Psalm 28, 7. He is with you daily. 
Psalm 1611. He is able. Ephesians 321, which is what we opened up with tonight. He goes before you. 1 Chronicles 16, 11, 12. And he covers you with his guidance and his protection. And that's all of Psalm 25. He can handle all your problems. He's willing to meet you where you are right now. Trust him. Psalm 33, 20. So I'm going to read that again and not stop and give the scripture verses and let you know who is in control of your life. And it is God. He is in control. He is strong. He is with you daily. He is able. He goes before you. He covers you with his guidance and protection. And he can handle all your problems. He's willing to meet you where you are right now. Trust him. Trust him. And it is a matter of trusting. We serve a God who is able. There is nothing impossible for God. Amen. amen. Nothing. Good. I heard one amen. There amen. is nothing amen. impossible for God. Amen. 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 And are you God's child? Amen. And if you pray to the Father, then there should not be anything impossible that God cannot do in your life. Spencer talked tonight about when we pray for those that are sick, and if they don't get healed, we, we're not to wear that. We're praying and doing as God says, pray for the sick. And then it is the will of God, His will. And we need to learn to be content. I know that there is one woman within this congregation tonight that has already said to me, she is content with what God has for her. Do you realize what a gift that woman has? Mm -hmm. What a tremendous stronghold she has to be holding on to. She understands that God is in control. God has her in his hands, but she is content to be in God's hands, allowing him to be in control. That spoke volumes to me. So we serve a God who is able, and nothing is impossible for God. To do immeasurably more, we cannot even imagine what God can do or what he will do for those who love and trust and obey his word. We need to ask God for that which we need. Do not be afraid to ask the Father to meet your needs. He knows what you need before you ask. However, he wants you to ask. He wants you to expect an answer to your request. He loves to give. Jesus tells us that we don't have because we don't ask. Wednesday, I was having new windows put in the house. And the fellow that was putting them in called me last week because he was going to put them in. It rained all week, if you remember. So Wednesday morning he called me and he said, I don't think I'll do those windows today, Caroline, because it's going to rain. And I said, no, it's not. <laughs> And he said, yes, it is. The radio said, they just get done saying, it's going to rain. It's going to rain at lunchtime. And I said, it's not going to rain. God and I have already talked this over this morning. And my God is a great big God. And he's in control of the weather. And he told me it's not going to rain. And he said, well, if I come and start those windows, they're going in the basement. If I come and start those windows and the water starts pouring in, that's not my problem. And I said, no, I'll take full responsibility for that. Because God told me it's not going to rain. Well, the man came, came at 10 o'clock. I guess he was testing. <laughs> but he did come at 10 o'clock, and he pulled out one window, and he put the window in. Then he went around to the house, and they started on the other two. They went off to lunch at 1 o'clock. They came back at 2 o'clock. And the sun was like huge <laughs> in the sky. It was the biggest sun I'd ever seen. And it was streaming down on us. And he got out of his truck, and he said, wow. There's not a cloud in the sky. 
and the sun is out. What a gorgeous day. And I said, I know, because God purposed this day for the windows, because he knew I had a need. They had to go in. God listens to the cry of your heart. Something even as simple as that. Our God is a good God. Mm -hmm. They finished at 10 to 5. They drove away. And at 10 after 5, a huge black cloud came over Riverton. And the rain came down in sheets. And this man lives in somewhere past Alma. And he probably would have got that far when the rain would have hit him. And he would have realized that our God is an awesome God. Amen. That he covered the day. He covered the day. I only needed a few hours without water. And God provided. That's how important your prayer is to him. He is in control. He knows how to deliver your day. God delivered, even though the weatherman said, chance of showers. God is in control. He, he allowed the sky to stay clear and even sent the sun to shine on my day. He gave me more than what I asked for. And in our word tonight it says that he will do immeasurably more than what we expect. Remember, I asked for a day without rain, and I hadn't even mentioned the sun, but God gave me more. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians 3.20, let me read it again. According to his power that, it is work, that is at work within us, if Jesus lives in you and you live in him, you have that same power that Jesus has according to the word of God. It says so right in this scripture. According to his power that is at work within us. So that's Jesus saying you have that power. We are to give glory in the church and in Jesus Christ. We are to witness to others, to show them that God hears and answers prayers. To assure them to never give up, do not give in, and to pray Always, unceasingly. Prayer, answered prayer, does prayer, wait a minute, does answered prayer come in a moment, in a day, in a month, in a year, in several years? All the time. Comes, it comes all the time. Does it come in the manner that we might expect? Sometimes. Sometimes, Sometimes. most Sometimes. often not. No. Sometimes we don't even see it coming. Mm -hmm. And there it is, the answer to the prayer. Because God opened the door and let it come. Answer prayer comes in God's timing. In God's timing. Sometimes we need to wait. We need to be patient. Sometimes that's not easy. Sometimes it's hard sitting around on our blessed assurance waiting for God to come on in. We're saying, where are you, God? I've been waiting. But he comes. Don't forget. Don't ever forget, he comes. His timing is not our timing, and his ways are not our ways. He never fails. He never leaves or forsakes us. He is constant, and he is the only constant that I have in my life. And he's the only constant that you have in your life. Do you know there are times you can't even depend on you? Yeah. You can't depend on you, mm -hmm. but you can depend on God. Right. So, don't give up. You're on the brink of a miracle. Don't give in. God is still on his throne. Don't give up. You're on the brink. Of a miracle. Don't give up. Remember you're not alone. Everybody sing. Don't give up. You're on the brink of a miracle. Don't give in. God is still on his throne. 
Don't give up, you're on the brink of a miracle. Don't give up, remember you're not alone. You are never alone, for the word says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, mm -hmm. says the Lord. So do you see an open door? Will you pass through the, the open door to receive what God has for you? Be open to believe. Be open to receive. And then give all glory and honor to him who is able to do immeasurably more than, than we can ask or imagine according to his power that, it is work, that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your promises found in your word. And thank you for your love, for your good gifts mm, to us. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Cause us, Lord, to always be watching for the open door where we can come before you knowing that you have good gifts to bestow upon us. Let us come with thanksgiving, glory, and honor to you alone. Thank you, Lord, for allowing each heart here tonight to receive in a way that you would design. And we thank you, Lord, that as we stand on your word, it is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It is constant, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.